So this is the quote from Matthew 6.12, which is in the Lord's Prayer, and it's in the Passion Translation. Forgive us the wrongs we have done, Lord, as we ourselves release forgiveness to those who have wronged us. See, it's just a little different than trespass and trespass against us. It's hard to associate that with our daily life, but if you're going to live such a hard life, remember the story that Jesus told of the man who was forgiven a debt, a large debt, and then he went down and chased the guy that owed him money and showed no mercy on that man? Like, that is not the kingdom of God. And again, you got to be careful. This is a fine line that we're walking because we're not saying that people should just be allowed to take advantage of you. What we are saying, I like movie scenes sometimes, and in the movie Les Mis, the guy that's played, I can't think of his name, the lead, the lead guy is an Australian actor. Help me out. You, Jackman. See, ask the audience. You guys always know. You, Jackman, steals some silver from the priest. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You saw this? And he gets caught by the police. The police bring him back to the priest, expecting the priest to press charges. And in that moment, you see a little twinkle in the priest's eye. And he says, no, you're going to learn about Jehovah Sneaky, you, Jackman. And he goes, no, I'm not going to press charges. I gave them the silver, gave him the silver, and he forgot this one. And he brings it and hands it, and the cops are all going, no way. And you, Jackman, is like, what drugs are you on right now? Nobody ever showed me mercy in my life. What's wrong with you? You're weak. This is what happens in people's heads. It's like, I wasn't taught those rules. I wasn't taught you could ever show mercy to somebody because it's a cold, cruel world. And do it to them before they do it to you. That's what I heard. And now I'm just going to give you another quick illustration. And it's a woman named Abigail uh, that you probably know about if you've ever studied the life of David. And I'm going to present her as a picture of the Holy Spirit for us today. And, you know, the Holy Spirit should be called Holy Spirit, not the Holy Spirit, because he's a person. We don't say the Jesus. <laughs> when we pray, we say Father, not the Father. So when you speak of Holy Spirit, say Holy Spirit is the divine nature of God that's resting inside of us who will take the reins only if we let him. He doesn't force himself on us. So if we ask him, he comes or he's welcome. And that's the picture I see with, with this woman. And you have to also just think about David. I'm jumping into the story in 1 Samuel 25. He had been on the run from Saul. And he had been, you know, he had, he had a kind of a band of, uh, of people that, that were kind of the outcasts of the society. And he turned them into these mighty warriors. That they were fighting. That's a great picture of the church, right? And while they were on the run, they were protecting the the flocks of this one man named Nabal, and David sent his servants, which was the customary thing to do, say, hey, it's time for the harvest, and, and it's time for you to show your appreciation that, that we protected your people. And this man Nabal, who his wife said was a fool, decided he was going to say, no, I'm not going to do it. And when David heard the report, so David's young man returned, told him that Nabal said no. What did he say? Strap on your swords. <laughs> You've all been here, I'm guessing, right? where it's just that final little straw that breaks the camel's back. And whatever frustration you were holding on to just goes <laughs> And you're not in control anymore. Your emotions are in control. You've been hijacked. Happened to be going into New York one time in the Lincoln Tunnel. And you know how that is. That's an insane asylum trying to get in there during rush hour. And, and you know, everybody's just like, it's a game of cat and mouse. Who's going to be the one to stick their nose in? And the trucks don't care. They just go. And like, you, you can't do anything about that. But a guy in front of me, I just touched his bumper. When I tell you, like, just touched the bumper. He threw the car into park. He jumped out of his car. He's screaming like a lunatic because that was his moment. See, he cracked. We got to be really careful because the devil's good at getting you to that place. And so is your family. <laughs> they know how to push the button because they've been with you the longest. So, you know, make things right because they know you well and they can just keep going. Ding, 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 bingo, bingo, bingo. And you don't always have the defense for it, right? So David's gone right now. Strap on your swords. More Sicilian, I think. <laughs> And he's, he and about 400 of his men. You think he needed 400 men to go to this guy's house? No, but this guy's going to know who's in charge, right? Oh, man. When you give an anointed person power and they misuse the power, 
That's a real Frankenstein, boy. And that's who David was at this moment. So I'm only giving you selective verses. Verse 18, Abigail, knowing the stakes, meaning she was going to die, rushed about gathering the gifts similar to what her husband should have offered. Earlier, David had made an oath. Now, this was called filter your self-talk. You see at the top? How many know that you have self-talk going on in your brain and that you can change that based on which satellite dish you're tuned into, right? So change the dish. If you're getting garbage in, garbage is coming out. Put worship music in. Put the Word of God in. Keep yourself taught well. It changes how you respond. Even the involuntary things you do. Like, you ever notice when you're driving and you're worshiping and somebody cuts you off? It's like, no big deal, brother. Go ahead. I'm not in any hurry. God, thank you. You're all my life you have been faithful. Like, you're not in as big of a hurry, right? Because, like, I'm not letting, you're not that good. You can't steal my joy, buddy. You're in a hurry. Sorry. That's your problem. I'm not making your problem my problem. <laughs> so, but this is what David's saying in his brain. It looks as though we protected everything this guy owns so that he, he I'm sorry, lost none of the things belonging to him. We did this for nothing. We did him a good turn, and now he rewards us with evil. This is the vow. May the true God do so to my enemies and more if tomorrow morning I've left alive a single male of Nabal's house. That's called a death sentence. David was a warrior. He knew how to kill people. <laughs> All right. Remember Braveheart? When he, when he rides into the village? I like the one where he gets the guy under the neck. Man, that was a good one. Never forgot that. <laughs> David was ready to slaughter these people all because he got hijacked emotionally. Holy Spirit will step in into the breach and give you calm in your emotions and make you realize you're about to make a really big mistake. But if you ignore him, it's not his fault. You're allowing your flesh to win. So when Abigail saw David, she dropped quickly from the donkey and fell to, her, fell to the ground. The ground in front of David bowing. And again, I'm only giving you certain verses here. This is what she said. The Lord, and it's, I gave you different colors just to understand. She's talking about God there. Will certainly make for my Lord. She's talking about David. Right? She's speaking to him with respect. Because she knows that this man's been prophesied to be the king. And Saul is after him and he's on the run. So she's like reminding him just in the language that she's using. You know, the Lord has certainly made for my Lord an enduring house. Because my Lord fights the battles of the Lord. And evil is not found in you throughout your days until about a half hour from now when you get to my house. Then there's going to be a big problem. You might want to think this out. Yet a man has risen to pursue you, that's Saul, and seek your life, but the life of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of the living. Whoa. How about that picture? Ah, I'm not escaping this bundle that I'm in. I'm, I'm here living with God in God's kingdom in the earth. Sure, there's lots of nasty stuff going on out there, but my kingdom gives me a different set of instructions than cancel culture. I have mercy because I know mercy triumphs over judgment in the long run. Now, you might say, yeah, but revenge is sweet. But not to get, I don't know what the right word is, but we used to have a saying that paybacks are, you fill in the blank. That ain't sweet, okay? So then you're living like Israel and the Palestinians, and every year you're just fighting back and forth, and you're throwing bombs back and forth at each other, and no progress is being made. You're teaching your children to hate them from grammar school. Like, how could that be the best way to handle it? So he says, she says to him prophetically, you're still there. You haven't sinned yet. Your, your life is still bound in the bundle of the living with the Lord your God. And the lives of your enemies, he shall sling out. Sound familiar? The battle belongs to the Lord, not us. As from the pocket of a sling, and David knew slings, didn't he? And it shall come to pass when the Lord has done for my Lord, according to all that he has spoken concerning you, and has appointed you ruler over Israel, that this will be no grief to you, nor offense of heart to my Lord, either that you have shed blood without cause, or that my Lord has avenged himself. So he was about to spill innocent blood, and he was about to have a mark on his record that God could not bless. And he knew about that in other areas of his life later, didn't he? And then David said to Abigail, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel who sent you this day to meet me. 